On this now playing episode of View the Right Thing, Wes, Desi, and new guest commentator Dwayne parachute in with the U.S. Airborne Infantry. It's the day before D-Day of World War II, and American paratroopers have landed behind enemy lines in a village of Nazi-occupied France to complete a mission critical to the success of D-Day. But next to the village is a Nazi bunker that holds a terrifying secret, which poses a threat to the entire balance of the war. Brace yourself for this adventure into a war of the un dead in the J.J. Abrams production of Overlord, now playing on View the Right Thing. Hey, how's it going? We're here for another mini episode of View Mini-fold. the Right Thing. Yeah, It's super weird because I think I just heard Dwayne introduce us and Dwayne is in this episode. Hi Dwayne, how you doing? It's time for View the Right Thing with Dwayne. And I'm going to turn my radio voice off now because that's kind of good. I'm not going to say, didn't you just say that? I'm just just going to dominate this conversation if I keep that on. Oh, well, in in terms of volume, I mean. A little part of me always wanted you to dominate the conversation, so. (laughs) Wow. Wow. So, Dwayne, uh, other than being the voice of our intro, like, can you tell, like, who are you? Who is Dwayne? Uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, hey, I'm Dwayne, and I am one of your high school chums. Uh, after high school, we kind of lost contact, and we got back together back in the bad old days of MySpace, and we started talking to one another, and you're like, hey, come over and hang out with me sometime. And I'm like, all right, and we started hanging out, and uh, you're still like the big movie geek that I knew from high school, and it's been a nonstop roller coaster of you talking about movies ever since, and we're also into geeky stuff, and we do all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, and then you moved away from the Seattle area and now you're down in the Los Angeles area and but we still chat once in a while and uh, hang out once in a while and that's more or less about it but what do you Unless do like, so so what do you but what do you do oh uh, what do I do oh I, yeah. I, I I have your old job which was at Microsoft and <laughs> I do a, some occasional uh voiceover work for some production on occasion every once yeah. in a while you have a you have a little bit of a background in radio right yeah, I, I did a, a stint in college radio and, and, and uh, professionally for a while. Didn't really go anywhere with it because, well, the job market for broadcasting is kind of terrible. So sure. you got to go to uh, switch gears and try to find something new. So that's kind of it. But uh, radio is still fun to do. For, uh, post-production stuff is, is fun to do. So uh, it's yeah, stuff I mean, that, that kind of sticks with you for a while. I've loved every single intro you've ever done for us. So I'm, I'm I guess I, I'm a... Uh the beneficiary of, of <laughs> the poor radio work market. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Sorry about that. But, well, it's, <laughs> it seemed, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah. Uh, so, um, since we're going to talk about a movie that's in the theater, we're going to bypass like what the whole question about what have you seen recently? Uh, what trailers have you seen that year for movies that are coming up that you're really excited for? Oh, I, I think one that kind of stands out. It's one that I've kind of been originally I was excited about, it, but now I'm kind of like, oh, we'll see what happens. Um, uh, Battle Angel Alita, uh, because that's been pushed back quite a few times. Um, but I'm also really interested in seeing Glass. Yeah, okay, uh, let me let's talk Alita first, and then let's talk okay. about Glass. Because I'm exci- I'm sure. excited to talk about both these things. So I'm a hundred percent with you on Alita. Um. The fact that they pushed it back to February seems like a really bad sign. Yeah. They pushed it back. Yeah. Not only did they push it back, but the movie they replaced it with is a re-release of Deadpool. So, mm, not a positive sign. Um, yeah. But also, is is Robert Rodriguez Day done? Like, he's kind of hacky at this point, isn't he? Uh, I I don't I I got to remember like what he's done recently. I like I rewatched uh, Planet Terror recently and and. That was one that that's like a fun movie that, that I enjoy, but I don't really, I can't like remember offhand like what he's done recently. Well, Sin City comes to mind. Okay. Um, here, I'll pull him up on IMDb while we're while we're discussing, um, possibly, filmography, director. Uh, he did some lots of TV like uh, From Dusk Till Dawn the series. Oh yeah, yeah. He started the uh, the L Ray Network. Yeah. Um, with that some movie called no that doesn't come out for wait a hundred years, years? This movie, 
he did a movie called 100 Years that doesn't come out till 2115. <laughs> so IMDb's release date for it, the year for it, listed as 2115. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Sin City, Dame to Kill for, which I didn't think was very good. Um, Machete Kills, I, I didn't see. Uh, I wanted to see that, but I didn't see it, see it either, which I feel kind of disappointed in myself not seeing, because I enjoyed the first Machete. Yeah, Spy Kids 4. Yeah. Planet Terror. Not not much, but I mean, well, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I thought the first Sin City was pretty good, but I don't know. I, I didn't really like Once Upon a Time in Mexico. I didn't really like the second Sin City. Um, I mean, Planet Terror is supposed to be bad, but that doesn't make it necessarily good either, even though it's like yeah. enjoyable, you know? Yeah. So I I don't know. I I'm very suspect, and the fact that they also push this back makes me. Yeah, February is not a not a great sign. No. Yeah, like January and February are usually like the it's the dumping ground of all the crummy stuff. Which uh, a few years ago, when the latest Die Hard movie came out, it was came out in February. I'm like, uh, what? Yeah, like the that's that's summer okay. temple movie, like an like an early summer movie, but uh, they dumped it in February and it didn't do so good. So. Right. Yeah, and if they, if they push this back, I think it's like the second time they push it back. So like you said, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be coming out last year, and they pushed it out to December of this year, and then it's been pushed to February next year. So, yeah, I don't know. And the fact that James Cameron didn't direct it, like originally, my understanding was, you know, he got the rights to it, and he was his plan was to direct it. I know Avatar happened in between when he got those rights and now, <laughs> but. Yeah the fact that he decided not to direct this also is maybe telling. I, I just don't know how well these, um, these stories, comic book and like manga and, and animation, Japanese animation. So I don't know how well these stories translate to live action. doesn't seem like yeah. they've done very well up to this point. Um, did you see the ghost in the shell movie? I, I didn't. I was kind of interested in seeing it, but then uh, the reviews came out and said it was terrible, and so I said, I think I'm going to wait on that one. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't seen it yet. I, I kind of want to see it at some point, but uh, I yeah, the reviews weren't weren't good at all, and it was one of those things where it's it's the original Ghost of the Shell I know is very well regarded, and it was just a tale of an American bastardization of it, and they and they just screwed it up. Right. Yeah, I didn't see it either. But yeah. I, I was kind of interested in it, and then I just kind of lost interest. I, I think I might be more interested if I came across a 3D copy and watched it in 3D. Um, I might do it for the gimmick of the 3D, but I don't care about the story at this point. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so the other movie you said was... Was Glass. Glass. Yeah. Like, M. Night, okay. Yeah, because like M. Night Shyamalan, is kind of, he's kind of in this, in this comeback phase, so hopefully he's going to put out something that's... Uh, um, that's some some quality entertainment. Okay, so and going I going with the. Uh... Oh, go ahead. Uh, oh yeah, well, just keeping with the with the mythology of the, of the series he has going on so far with uh, Unbreakable yeah. and Split. Yeah. So I um I I'll admit I did not see Avatar: The Last Airbender, and I didn't really like the happening. But I'm for the most part, even with those movies, um, I'm a pretty like unashamed. M. Night Shyamalan fan. Yeah. I've been I've been a fan of his since Wide Awake, since before Sixth Sense. Um and uh I Unbreakable is one of my favorite movies. The split was so good too. It, the split's great. And like even like it was good on its own. Like we didn't even know it was gonna be connected until the very end. And that moment Oh yeah, hell they, yeah, no one did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that moment when they revealed it and I reached over and grabbed Desi's leg. It was like <gasps> <laughs> because I'm such a huge fan of Unbreakable, and yeah. I, I always, I have always thought that they were, you know, missing out on an opportunity to do this like sort of trilogy, and now they've kind of made it happen. So. Yeah, yes, it look, looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. Wait, what do you, what are you thinking about about uh, Glass? Well, I, I'm. I'm I'm really interested in seeing what they do with it um, because I don't I, I assume this is going to be like wrapping up as a trilogy. I don't know that Shyamalan might continue on with it. Uh, but again, uh, excited about to see what he does with it. But at the same time, again, it comes out in January, and usually that's not a good sign. So yeah. I'm hoping it bucks the trend. I mean, it, there there are gems that you'll find. There are diamonds in the rough during the January February months. 
So I'm hoping that he's going to pull this off. So uh, we're going to just have to wait and see what happens. And, and hopefully something that'll be like, wow, that's just, this is really exciting. Well, I think you bring up a good point too, that, um, that there are gems. I think studios, they know that they like, you know, uh, universal knows that universal releases bad movies in those months. They're kind of throwing those movies away. They also know that Fox does that. So there is some strategy to, Hey, I, we know that there's going to be a bunch of garbage. We'll put something out there that can actually compete with those things and actually um, gain popularity. I mean, Black Panther was released in February, yeah. you know, and, and that, that was yeah, yeah. massive. <laughs> so, uh, and, and it seems like um, pattern wise, it's been kind of creeping up. Um, the mummy. I th- so it used to be like nothing big came out until like May. Yeah. And then I think maybe the mummy, the first Brendan Fraser mummy maybe came out in April. And I think the first matrix movie maybe came out in March. So they sort of started experimenting and, and kind of throwing these yeah. unknown quantities out there, um, especially action related things. So maybe that's happening and maybe they're, you know, also you could have a mediocre movie, uh, you know, next to a bunch of really terrible films and that mediocre movie all of a sudden looks great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So, um, and sometimes you need a break from those Oscar films, right? Yeah. You do. Oh, the, for uh, sure. And, and, and yeah. And, and even then, like he sometimes like, like we were saying gems, cause uh, the silence of the lambs came out in January and it became a huge hit and it won the, it won the Oscars uh, the next year, which is a, kind of a hard thing to do. Cause Usually yeah. all the big award movies come out at the end of the year. Right. Well, yeah. when, I, when I think when they're fresh. So, so just for clarity, I think um, uh, Silence of the Lambs was, had a limited release the year prior. Um, in uh, order to be eligible for an Academy Award, you have to be released in the year that the awards are. So if the 2018 awards, which are, will actually be called the 2019 Academy Awards, are for all the films that come out in between January 1 of 2018 to December 31st of 2018. So there's a bunch of movies. That's why you see, especially at the end of the year, a lot of like in limited release in New York and LA. And then they, yeah, don't, yeah. they don't show up till January or February sometimes right. um, because, you know, they want to get it. They in. just want to make sure they get it in. They know they, that maybe it's not really a competition film for Christmas. You know, right, like right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't release, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a movie that came out at the end of the last year. Or I wouldn't release "Call Me by Your Name" at Christmas time, right? right like, yeah. but I would put it out in limited release for sure because I want to get the award nomination and then maybe release it in January. Um, once it's got that that award buzz. Once it's got the buzz, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, Sansa probably fell into that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, uh, you do the uh, you do the best picture thing pretty much every year, right? Uh, yeah, when I, when I can. The, the last couple of years have been kind of dicey because I think a, a couple of years ago, well, last year I wasn't able to do it because uh, Comic-Con here in Seattle was happening. And so uh, the one weekend it was happening, I didn't go. And then a couple of years back, I was actually moving from uh, one, one apartment to the other and I missed out. And so that, yeah, so, the, so a couple of years, the last couple of years have been a little dicey. Yeah. But, what, but hopefully we'll see what happens next year because I think Comic-Con might happen again on the same weekend when that happens so well, i'll have to wait and find out what happens were there any have there ever been doing those like big marathon things like that have there ever been any like standout years where you're just like this was such a great experience or is it all kind of just kind of the same every year i think it's kind of the same every year like the the cool thing is that at least the theater that they do it at the amc like they'll do trivia in between movies and then you can yep. you can win some prizes like usually it's just like a poster or, or some kind of merchandise and but sometimes they'll give away like movie tickets and and some employees like really seem to enjoy doing it so it's kind of they, they kind of put like a little zest into it so yeah. it's so yeah it, it can be fun depending upon the uh the employees and how, how they how they how they roll with it yeah huh so cool. trailer wise yeah we saw a trailer today that i've seen before but we haven't it hasn't come up on the podcast yet because i haven't seen it since we've been recording Since again. We've been recording Do you again. want to talk about that right now? Uh, so we saw the trailer for Captain Marvel again, and I am super effing excited about it. So the, so there's something in the trailer. They show something I wish they didn't show. There's a little bit of a spoiler, so we'll just try to avoid talking about things in the trailer. Yeah. But, yeah. but I, know, I, keep not, I keep wanting Desi to not see it, because I already knew about it ahead of time. Um, 
And I noticed when the trailer was going on, you looked down when it happened. And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, I, I haven't realized whatever it is. Yeah. So I, I don't know. But I'm, I'm like really excited to get a Marvel female hero movie yeah. on the books. Because and, and she's going to be. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good. And she looks like she does a great job. And Well, they've kind of already said that Captain Marvel will be the most powerful hero in the MCU. Right. So that's also very exciting. Yes, it's super Brie Larson's amazing. Freaking exciting. Um and you know there 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 are a few other ladies that I'm hoping will eventually get their own. Yeah, I know you yeah. pictures uh, based off of the success of this. So Yeah. You know. I'm I'm pretty excited about that. I saw something today. I saw a trailer today. Uh, yeah. For something that I was that we haven't talked about yet. What's up? Uh, have you seen the trailer for Escape Room, Dwayne? I this is I think this is the first time I actually watched it. Yeah, so uh, this is the first time I, I've seen it in the theater. I think um, maybe one other. Maybe yeah, I, yeah, I did. I did see it online, and then I saw the theater today. I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I I remember seeing that trailer. Man, I love a, I love a good gimmick movie. <laughs> I mean, I just really, 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 really love a gimmick in a, in a film. I, I'm I'm excited about that. I think it'll be good. Um, I mean, it's in January, so probably. Yeah, no. I mean, good. I think, it, I think and, it'll be fun. Yeah, I agree. And entertaining. I agree. Um, but there's like a set in the trailer that like just makes me the bar set. Yeah. <laughs> um, I won't. I won't like spoil it in case anybody hasn't seen the trailer. But like, it's a great moment as a just like a kind of a you know set decorating geek a little bit. I'm just like, oh my god, that looks like so. It was so much fun to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic about yeah. it. You know, again, it comes out in January, which makes me. I think it was originally scheduled to be released this fall, and then I don't know if it just wasn't ready or they don't have faith in it or whatever. But it ended up in January. But you know, horror films can do pretty well. I think Cabin in the Woods came out in the before spring, maybe maybe March, the year that that came out, maybe. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm quite excited for escape room <laughs> is anybody know does, have they seen any, anybody seen anything about it maybe being in 3d uh, i would like it to be in 3D. i, I don't, I don't so. remember mm, that's too bad yeah i don't remember i don't remember seeing anything about it being in 3d but that's too bad that would be good in 3d <laughs> um okay well uh anybody anything else anybody wants to talk about any other trailers that uh, anybody wants to talk about in particular so. move on to our main main attraction sound good Dwayne? on 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 to the main attraction all right. Let's do it. So we saw Overlord, mm-hmm. uh, which is a uh, World War II mutant. I don't know. How, how do you describe this film? I mean, I think mutant probably infected, kind of covers it. An infected film? They're kind of like infected? Yeah. It's know. sort of a pseudo zombie, I'd say. Okay, yeah, but that's sort of like that's how I look at infected. Is like infected are kind of like zombies, but they're not technically necessarily undead. But they're also they not infected by a disease. No, but yeah, I mean, well, twenty eight days later, twenty eight days later, aren't they infected by a, a man made creation as well? So I don't know. They're doing like experiment experiments or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was the rage virus. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. So. Yeah, I don't think you have to be, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, so we, did the movie seem loud to you, Dwayne? Because the, our movie was incredibly loud. It, yeah, I, th- I think it was a little bit uh, above average in terms of volume. So yeah, the theater I saw it at was pretty loud. Uh, part of that, I think, was because there was probably maybe only half a dozen people in, in, sure. in the theater with me. Yeah, um, so I don't know if, if the human element may have absorbed some of that or not. So, but yeah, it was it was, it was a bit loud, but it wasn't ear piercingly bleeding from the ears loud right so i would say if you're looking for a loud explosive in many ways um actiony kind of film this kind of fits mm-hmm. that bill right now it's definitely gory definitely gory um violent so basically uh these paratroopers are being sent in behind enemy lines um just uh, the day the, the night before the normandy invasion right and they're tasked with taking down a radio tower, um, so that way the the troops can, so the air support can get to the right. beach, so they can get to the beach, um, and uh, of course, all hell breaks loose almost immediately in the film yeah. and, and throws a wrench in the plans. So 
Um, so just a quick reminder, we're going to real quick say whether we liked it, whether we recommend it. And then um, after that point, there are potential spoilers yes. for any of our listeners. So um, first question, Dwayne, did Yo. you like this film? Did I like it? Yes, I did. I think uh, it 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 knows what it is and it doesn't exactly reinvent any wheels, but right. it's something that I ultimately I, I did enjoy. Does that, did you like it? Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think I feel pretty much the same. I mean, it's it's definitely not for everyone. It is very gory and bloody and violent, right. <laughs> but it's fun and actiony and like you said, like Dwayne said. It, you know what it, it knows what it is right and it's you know it's not trying to be something that it isn't and mm-hmm. so yeah so for me when the movie ended i liked the movie having given it some thought i loved the movie <laughs> um i i just the more i think about watching that film and how much i was enjoying it and it didn't feel like it was a long runtime or anything like it didn't feel like there was like what we call shoe leather right yeah. it didn't feel like there were pacing issues really um, and, and kind of to what you said, Dwayne, like it, they're not reinventing the wheel, but they know what they are. Like, I think they kind of leaned into that, which was really neat. Yeah. Um, uh, would Dwayne, would you, would you recommend, you know, if somebody was into this kind of film, would you recommend this as a, like a 10 to $15 ticket? Uh, I would, I would say, I would go with, I would go with a matinee on this one. I mean, matinee. if, if, if this is something that you're not really, and, and, and I, when I say like the matinee, I, I, I have kind of like high standards as to what you would want to pay. And I'm usually one that goes to matinees all the time anyway, just to, cause I'm, I'm frugal. Sure. Uh, but this, yeah, but I say this is like a, like a really solid matinee. Um, and so it's, it's, if, if it's, this is a kind of, if this is a genre of a film that, Hey, this, this kind of appeals to me, I might like this. I think you'll definitely get your money's worth for that. Might be pushing a little bit if you if you pay full price. What, what did you think, this? Yeah, well, I think I'd agree with that assessment. You're, you're in I the mean, matinee camp. Yeah, I mean, we're you know, as I'm sure our listeners probably know by now, we do that A list, so it's a little easier for us to see sure. things without having to pay full price. Sure. Um, I feel like if if you're really into the genre, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a must, regardless of like I think it's a fifteen dollar ticket. If you're really into the genre and you can see it on Fomax or whatever, you know, fake IMAX thing that AMC is doing, yeah. um, I think the sound's good and I think the picture quality's pretty vibrant. Um, I think if you're really into that genre, then um, I think it's I think it's absolutely worth a fifteen dollar ticket. I think if you're an average movie goer who just likes to see a lot of movies but you don't necessarily love it, I think you guys are probably right. Matinee is probably pretty accurate. And if you're, you know, my mom. Then don't go see this movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of in line with you guys yeah. on that. Um, so let's let's talk about what we liked and what we didn't like about the film. Um, let me let me let me just start with one thing. Um, what I have thought about more um, throughout the day because we saw this earlier today. Um, what's making me like the movie more and more is that there, it's a blend of genres in a way that I feel like hasn't been done this successfully. If you took the horror elements out of the film, it, I think it could stand alone as a pretty standard military film. Yeah. Usually when you introduce all the horror stuff, when you remove the horror, it, it doesn't work. Um, but I think, I think this still could have really easily been a film about guys behind enemy lines trying to like overcome the odds and take out this tower. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they just happen to also fall into a, a horror movie. Right. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Any, any thoughts on that, guys? I, I, I can I can see that the way that you're saying it. Um, it I mean, it would, it would be, but I think at the same time, it probably might might be a little bit of like more of like a run of the mill kind of World War II movie if, if you keep it like that. And it would be something, it would be pretty short, but it would still be like, it's it's good, but it's nothing that really like stands out. Yeah, I but mean, the horror, they would have. Is what kicks it up? Yeah, I mean, they would have to obviously have to like add scenes to like make up for the runtime. I think they would probably have more stuff with the, um, the young French woman and yeah, um, may, and maybe more of a romance element. I mean, they don't force that in this no. movie at all, which I think it's actually fine. I mean, for what it is, yeah. 
for it being kind of a horror movie it's you don't need I, it. I, I kind of actually appreciated that they, that they did that that they didn't yeah. uh, tack on a romantic subplot i mean there's like there's like a little subtle subtleness there but it's yeah. not there which, which i which i rather enjoyed yeah okay so 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 spoiler alert for anybody that uh hasn't seen it yet i recommend you go see it first but if you don't care here we go um so talking about the rom- potential romance thing uh let's say hypothetically not that our young french heroine needs to end up with any of these guys at the end of the film but if she were to end up with someone who does she end up with well i think boyd boyce is it boyce boyce boyce, I boyce. Think? sorry boyce, boyce. <laughs> okay what do you think Dwayne? uh yeah it's it, le- it leans to boyce for sure um i i think she, 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 she's the one that that she that they have the most the strongest bond with I agree. I think it's the Italian guy for saving her little brother. She's, pat- <laughs> she's patching him up at the end, and I'm thinking he's kind of re- like when when the movie starts, um, you kind of really hate him. He's yeah, yeah, he's such the typical like you've seen him in so many military movies, you've seen this character in so many horror films. You you're like this guy's gonna die, and I'm gonna enjoy it when he dies because he's gonna kind of deserve it. And then he redeems himself by the end of the film. Yeah, and kind of comes to terms with this kid and i was kind of like oh is she gonna end up with him that'd be kind of cool <laughs> <laughs> um okay uh the i thought i thought the effects were pretty fantastic yeah. um the only the only sh- shot I, that really stood out in my mind that i didn't love um was when he tumbles out of the aircraft at the beginning of the film the end over end. I liked the concept of it. Yeah. I liked the execution for the most part, but there was something about the way they like oversaturated some things mm-hmm. that it made the background feel real fake to me. Mm, I, I don't know. Anybody didn't stand out to me. Any, it, anything effects wise that stood out? Um, I mean, there were some good effects that stood out to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, good, I mean, good or bad. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, so the the main villain, the first time you see, like, his face with a big hole in it, that looked pretty oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was something I really enjoyed because it was, they, they kind of, it, it was something that you, that you kind of saw that they were, they were going to reveal to you. And it was almost, it reminded me a lot of when two faces revealed in mm-hmm. in the dark night yeah, yeah. that they, there's they they kind of keep it out of frame but then they just kind of then they he just turns and shows it to you like uh yeah so that yeah seeing, seeing that that chunk of flesh blown off and, and his jaw open like that like oh yeah. that's pretty nasty i will say so, yeah, I, thought, I thought that was really well done whether it's it was practical effects or digital or a blend of both it looked it looked great yeah, yeah. and this the way he smiled with that there as yeah. well also was so unsettling um, my the, my only criticism with that is that they showed that in the Red Man trailer, so I oh. had that already kind of spoiled for me yeah. going in, and it was, okay. and I think it was a thumbnail for for something as well. So I was I was a little disappointed that I knew that that moment was going to be like as soon as he got shot, I was like, oh, this is how this is going to happen. But <laughs> yeah, um, I thought, uh, oh, man, I really loved that opening in the in the airplane. With Bokeem Wood- Woodbine and um, all the different sort of like trope guys there, yeah. and there's one guy's thrown up, and <laughs> yeah. the the gunfire. It's interesting because they show that was such a a kickoff piece for the um, the trailer uh-huh. that came out, so we yeah, knew yeah. that the plane was going to get all shot up and stuff. Right. Um, but the fact that that happened. And that scene kept going and going and going, and there was so much more to it. Yeah, I really, uh, I really appreciated. Yeah, it was pretty good. The, him, like, hit. Uh, what's the the guy's name that plays voice? Uh, that's a really great question because I, I kept going. Do I know this? Do I recognize <laughs> it? Uh, Jovan. Jovan oh, Depo. Yeah, Depo. Or a jo- jo- yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how, I'm, I'm sure I butchered his name, Jovan Depo. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he uh did a really fantastic job. I thought in the the underwater sequence after he l- falls out of the plane, like getting himself oh free yeah, from cut, the parachute and then like out. yeah, like cutting the parachute open at the top of the water. I thought he did a really good job with that. I'm sure that's not an easy scene to shoot. I I I appreciated how um 
how well they showed him progress from being afraid to being the hero. Yeah. Um, a lot of times there's just like a moment where like a switch flips, but as the movie progresses, like he does like one little thing more every right. time he's confronted with something. Um, so I appreciated the fact that they started to build that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm just checking the. So, okay. So this is a bad robot thing, right? Yes. So they said it was initially thought that this was going to be a Cloverfield universe thing. And then they said it wasn't. Are they lying to us? Um, I don't know. I don't feel like there was anything that specifically tied it to Cloverfield for me. I mean, I mean, I, I think it easily could fit in that universe, but I don't necessarily think it does or it needs to. Where are you following that, Dwayne? I, 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 I don't, I don't think it does. Not that I can really tell. I mean, this, this, there is some revisionist history in this right. and, right. and there are in, in the Cloverfield universe, there are, it, it's, it's not taking place on the same earth every time it happens. Right. So it's, there, there is, there is the potential of some sort of like alternate well, and, universe that they're trying to aim to, but I don't think this is part of that. Well, and it can be they, so like in Cloverfield paradox, they established that stuff could happen on the same earth that didn't happen before that essentially like something could happen in the past. Like time is very fluid in that, right. in that universe. Right. Yeah. So in theory, all the things that are happening in the future could have caused things to change in the past. Yeah. So my question is, where do they get the serum for this film? Like, where does all of this very, like, so... unrealistic stuff come from? And I believe it's Cloverfield. <laughs> I think maybe it's Wish Fulfillment, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, I felt it was very contained. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, like you, like you guys said, it is kind of revisionist history, but they sort of frame it in a way like it's like, oh, you just didn't know about it. Like, you know, like, like we just sure we blew it up and we nobody we didn't tell anybody and we just kept it a secret and like well i mean we all know that we all know that the nazis did horrible things to humans and and there was also this quest to find like a super soldier i mean that's right. what captain america is, is yeah is based on right so but they kind of talk about it being like the it's super brief but the the guy mentions it being like whatever this tar that's just under france it, yeah, where exactly. They have extracted this serum. But where does the tar come from? <laughs> from an alien that crashed so hard into the <laughs> earth that it's like hibernated and gooified under it. That's what I think. Could be. Absolutely could be. I also felt like they left it open that it could just be some natural phenomenon that they've somehow extracted, um, you know, something useful out of it. I don't know. Like, imagine. If you could inject Cloverfield Monster into your body, you would turn into part monster, right? I, I'm holding. I'm holding on to this theory. Okay, it's it's. And I'm, I'm sure you're not the only one, Wes. Yeah, but I just feel like the other movies that have been connected to that universe, they make it pretty clear that it's connected. Yeah, they make they make a much stronger case for yeah. it. Yeah, not not there's, there's, there's a lot more there's a lot, there's a lot more connective tissue. Not in Ten Cloverfield Lane. The only connections we get to that are in Cloverfield Paradox, which came after it. Yeah, I guess. Right? Eh? And they did try to tell us that 10 Cloverfield Lane was not connected. Exactly, they did, didn't they? <laughs> so, I'm just saying they have a history of telling us one <laughs> thing, and it really means something else, and one day I will be vindicated, and <laughs> You both will come to me on your knees groveling and yeah, apologizing. Yeah, that's definitely happen. I'm so sorry I didn't buy into your theory. <laughs> um, well, this, this, Wes, is, is why you don't show your hand too early, right? That's that's why you should have placed bets on this, right? Yeah, don't celebrate before but, you win. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so like, hey, who wants to put down money or, or something? Yeah. But no, too, too late, man. Yeah, so, we, yeah, I, now I, we know. Yeah. You've, made, you've made such a strong case for it. We're like, well, you could be right, so... Uh, do you so do you watch um, Agents of Shield? Uh, I watched the first few seasons and then I I lost track of it and so I haven't seen it in the, in the last like maybe two or three years. So I I yeah so I, I haven't I haven't seen it at all recently at all. I I've, I've not I've not been following it. So Ian DeCastiker is in this, and I 
I really liked seeing him do an American accent in this film. Yeah. I thought he did a pretty, pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have like a ton of lines, but he did a good job. There was one moment where I thought, oh, is he Scottish again? But but I think, I think for the most part, like I thought he did a a really great job. Um, It's, it's weird, like thinking about this film and thinking about a movie like Saving Private Ryan, which also takes place on D-Day. Yeah. um, And how there's, a writer that's with the group or somebody that's sort of like, and he's almost like, he, he wants to take his typewriter with him. He's essentially a journalist, right? Were, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, these guys that have a small group that have to go on this, this essentially a suicide mission, a mission against all odds. Yeah. Um, and then this really graphic opening, you know, it's, it's like the D-Day invasion, but in the sky. Right. So, right. I, I, I mean, not as clear and not quite as horrific, but, right. um, uh, which is interesting that Saving Private Ryan is more horrific than right. Well, <laughs> than it's opening. horrific in a different way, right? You yeah, know, it's it's very it's realistic, which makes realistic it realistic and visceral, and like like you're you know it's it, it was in, more historic. it was intentionally hunting for emotions, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, cool. Well, I think that's. I mean, I don't know what is there anything else to say about this movie? Um, it's fun. Yeah, I I love the moment when the Chloe character gets the uh, flamethrower. Yes. <laughs> so I uh, so you know I've been on this three hundred sixty five day movie challenge thing, yeah. and every day I've been posting a photo on Instagram, um, and so and I'm scheduling them out ahead of time because I'm right. way ahead right now, and so the photo I chose was her with the flamethrower. Her, flame, yeah. like her face is just like perfect. Yeah. It's um, like her her revenge, you know. <laughs> I I did think of something else that uh, that I thought was really great in the film. Uh, the surround sound uh-huh. in the film, I thought the sound was superb. Uh, it was it's one of the best uses of surround sound because you really get a feel like when they're in the forest, you really get a feel for the forest. You hear different foresty sounds all around you. Yeah. So I really uh, I really appreciated. Um, how solid that was. I was just looking at the director to see if he's done much of anything else. Yeah. The, and the, um, the guy who plays, um, the other like main character, the, uh, what's uh his Wyatt name? Russell, uh, Ford, Ford. Corporal, Corporal Ford, Corporal Ford. I, I thought he did a really fantastic job. He, he's kind of come out of nowhere, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I, if you notice this guy, like all of a sudden popping up in a bunch of things, I mean, uh, I, 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 I thought he was, uh, Shoot, because when I first saw him, uh, I was trying to remember who. Like he, he reckon, he reminds me. Of, he looks like someone else. Like I know him, but I just can't remember. I can't remember his name offhand. But uh, yeah, he's like that guy that like he was that guy that was in that thing. You know that that guy. <laughs> well, that's kind of what, who he is. Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why you probably recognize him. He's Kurt Russell's kid, and he played young Kurt Russell in Soldier. Oh, but like all of a sudden, like just in the and, and he's done some movies before like this last year or so but i and maybe i'm just like just now starting to see them but like i saw table 10 in this last year with anna kendrick he's in that mm-hmm. um, i saw everybody wants some the richard linklater movie um this last year he's in that he's in black mirror um, oh, yeah he's in, in the great uh video game episode of black mirror yeah. i think in season two or three three yeah i can't remember um so I don't know. I just feel like all of a sudden I've just been seeing him. Oh, he was in the new the the sequel to the Goon uh, Goon the um, Sean William Scott movie about the hockey player. Oh yeah. Ingrid goes west. He's in that. So yeah, I just feel like all of a sudden I'm seeing him all over the place. All over the place, yeah. He he does a, fan, a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, I like him a lot. All right. Last chance. Anything else? We all liked it. Yeah. We all had a good time. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was worth worth the time, worth the money. Uh, it's if you're into World War Two, I, I would say if you're, it, it it reminded me in a way, sort of the end of Inglorious Bastards. Mm-hmm. Um, the fantasy. That was sort of like quite a bit of mayhem in that. So if if you kind if you if you liked the 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 way that Inglorious Bastards went with the action things like that, you'll probably get get a kick out of that. That's a great comparison. Yeah. Um, oh, I also thought the the kid was good. He wasn't like I don't know, sometimes little, little boy Paul. 
yeah, Paul, like sometimes, you know, child actors are annoying and distracting and I thought he was totally fine and normal and him like uh, emulating the the one soldier is, is really funny. To me. <laughs> oh, oh, um, uh, the Dawson, the guy that was writing the book. Oh, yeah. That's Grey Worm in Game of Thrones. Oh, that's funny. Jake, he's Jake not Benson. in it very long. Raleigh Ritchie. He's, <laughs> he goes by the rap name Raleigh Ritchie, but his act, his actor name is Jacob Anderson. So yeah. Anyways, I thought that was so he's British, but he was playing an American. An American, and on Game of Thrones, he definitely does a different accent than yeah, yeah, um, British. So I thought that was sorry. Sorry, it did, just came to me. I was like, oh yeah, we gotta mention Jacob Anderson. Yeah. So. All right. Well, Dwayne. Um, normally, this is the part where I would say, where can people find you? Uh, but you're not like a big social media, like you're not on all the things. No, I'm not on all the things. I'm the, I'm that weird guy that's like, I'm fine with Facebook. That's all I need. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and, I, and, there's, and there's been plenty of times when John Oliver has almost got me to sign up for Twitter, but I'm like, ah, yeah, I'll get around to it sooner or later. <laughs> in, in, so someday I'll break and then I'll be on Twitter and Instagram and all that ish. Instagram's where it's at. Um, you know, I think you could have a really cool uh, paper craft folding uh thing on instagram yeah yeah i think all the stuff you do is really cool and uh, i think people yeah. are interested in seeing that kind of stuff it would, it would be especially well if I, if I if it was from the beginning yes but i'm kind of semi-retired from it because i just don't have any room much in my office for that stuff anymore <laughs> i love that you're you're retired from it from, your, from a hobby <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm saying i'm semi-retired i'll i'll do things on occasion but uh you're not uh the, the doing it's doing it non-stop is just sort of like uh i got no more room what do I do? You're like a, a guy who does ship in a bottle models, but like he, he it, everywhere he walks, you just hear jingling glass. <laughs> poor, poor Dwayne. Exactly. Full yeah. paper. I have to be very careful where I step so I don't knock over those ships and bottles. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, if anybody has any questions or comments for Dwayne, um, either A, keep them to yourself, or B, <laughs> message me at uh, on Instagram or Twitter at uh, VTRT Movies. Or you can find us on Facebook. Woohoo. Des, mm-hmm. do you want to? I'm, I'm on Instagram, uh, Blueprint Betty at Blueprint Betty. You have a cool Instagram. See, Dwayne, you're missing out on our Instagram post. <laughs> she has a really cool Instagram. It's, I do all right. I do all right. It's mostly mostly design related. Um, but it's always a like, nerdy thing. It's always like cool, like artsy, like cool angles of things or really unique looking things. So yeah, yeah. I try. I try. Lots of cool, <laughs> lots of cool patterns and stuff. I yeah, try to make it not like every other design Instagram where it's like 20 million pictures of white and beige interiors that are all look the same and are super boring. <laughs> all right. Dwayne, anything else you want to say to the viewsters? Uh, hopefully we'll be back in the near future. Hopefully this goes well and uh, I'll probably be hearing from you guys eventually sooner or later. Oh, yeah, we'll get you back on again. All right. Damn. Everyone, <laughs> until next time, Bon Cinema. <laughs>